do you believe that the phenomenon is the next big great religion in the world? I, yeah, I basically. The phenomenon yeah. has probably already influenced all the other religions already, so it's just, uh, wow. maybe we're looking at the source code. We're yeah, if you're looking at the source code. code. We're at the graphic user interface level, it's like um, IP header, and we're getting into, finally getting into the information flow. In her book, American Cosmic, Diana Pasolka makes the pretty convincing case that many seemingly divine contact experiences in the past could have actually been what we now call UFO experiences. Just take the case of St. Francis of Assisi. His close confidant, Brother Leo, documents the experience, describing sound and fury creating atmospheric sparks, a spinning disc, telepathic communication between Francis and the disc, and then Francis is wounded by rays of light. Francis interprets these hand wounds as the stigmata of Christ, but Pasolka speculates that maybe this was just radiation damage from a UFO experience. You know, I was reasonably religious, but nothing like crazy, kind of average. Studied physics, I became kind of agnostic. I was like, eh, I don't know about this, all this kind of woo-woo, you know, stuff that the church espouses and stuff. And then, oddly enough, I've kind of come full circle in some sense where there is this higher sentience, uh, there seems to be, uh, I think we're created beings in some manner, whether it be some pamspermia from little g-gods or big g god. I think about the people, the journey I had, and the most random people that I've known that were placed in my life like 14 years ago, you know, shut the door in my office at the NGA or like, look, dude. And, you know, they started telling me all this stuff that I was, un and they brought these like crazy intel reports. I guess I was kind of the right guy that was chosen to do this thing, I guess. But, um, so yeah, I've come full circle in uh, my belief system. For me, it's inspiring because it's like this idea that it's just, you know, eat, drink and be merry or whatever. Yeah. You know, you just, you, you live, you pay taxes, you, you work a job and then you die. Yeah, that's meaning to life and it's just like the Vatican Observatory saying, yeah, we're like cool with other sentient life that shows God paints like a, you know, broad brush and... That's pretty you cool. Know, and I, cause the Catholic Church is very accepting on that and it just shows, you know, God's providence and God's uh, creative powers if there's actually other interesting sentience besides totally. us it would be it's like you know what was it uh in the you know movie contact it's a total waste of space if it's just us yeah. right it's like the famous line in the movie carl sagan was a great communicator probably one of the best yeah you know. he also met a lot with kit green towards the end of his career he was a cia guy very into ufos yeah and, you were telling me that yeah. I, I didn't know that <laughs> yeah. so you yeah. can count on jesse to tell you these <laughs> Look behind you. Insane. Whoa, did you see that? Did you even notice that? this right here this is what Ezekiel was describing in the book of Ezekiel that's as far as it goes the chariots of the Lord we can video that were pressing with the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt into the wilderness this is actually an amazing sight this is one of the most amazing videos I've seen on TikTok as you can see you see the man the man-made machines are flying behind him and they can't keep up and these machines these chairs are not moving that fast like, what? What? and they what can't keep up on? these helicopters cannot keep up so it's just going to that? show to let you know this is something to watch out for but don't don't be amazed because he tells you not to be amazed by the, what's going on in the sky there are people flying
Ufo watched a military fight in the Ukraine, and the strange part is, this isn't the first time it's happened. Here's the problem, UFOs have been interested in military conflicts for so long and we don't know why. You got so mad at me for saying publicly on the news that we do fire at UAP, U UFOs, because we fucking do. UFOs have created such a problem for us in war zones that we've actually established procedures on what to do when we encounter them. For example, we'll shoot them down if they're carrying a payload within 30 miles of a mission. But we're not the only country with established procedures. In fact, numerous other countries are doing the exact same thing. We see other countries firing on these. Russia, Syria. We know it's not their assets. So the question is, whose are these? Shalom. Kahala Yahawa Bashem Yahshai Bashem Kapur Dash Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone Peace and mercy to the elect with the house of David reborn again in this generation And Shalom to the 130 Yashar Who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans Who before losing our true heritage Were known as and still are The true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible In today's lesson We're going to talk about the disclosure project that the government and Esau is doing and how it's ultimately a PSYOP to, and not to be trusted. But before we get into that, let's read this. This is Zechariah 5 and 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold, a flying roll. So you see what that first video was talking about where you see here that guy, David Grush, he's the, remember, he's the army whistleblower who's come out to tell the world that the government has not only found UFOs, but they shot them down and also have collected the biologics or so-called aliens from these wrecks and have given that information and the wrecks to military contractors so they can dismantle and reverse engineer the technology. Now, right here, what we're seeing is a PSYOP. You see, because we, what we've seen is David Grush go to Congress, give his testimony, go on talk shows. But what's happening in this particular video is you'll notice that the setting, it's more subdued, more laid back, and you get, it's kind of cringy, but you can see he's trying to, you know, speak hip like the younger crowd, right? And why is this? Well, because you see, they need to get the Gen Zers on board. This is why you have all of these young people here listening to his talk. Because what's happening is they're going to be, they've put out this interview all over the internet and they want to get the younger crowd interested and excited about this PSYOP. This is why the video, it's filmed in a way where it appeals to the younger crowd. Right? They have this blog host who's, uh, I'm guessing he's fairly popular amongst this crowd. But the point being is that you can't trust Edom when it comes to talking about the chariots because Though they touch the pawn that these chariots have something to do with religion, they're not going to tell you who they are and you know, what they're actually doing. You see, because Esau has a vested interest to not let the world know what the chariots are. And why is that? Well, the Bible tells you that these are the chariots of the Lord. These are the vehicles that the angels use to get around the world and go back and forth between our realm and the higher realms like heaven and you see the reason they do this is because they're observing us and they're also interacting with us in certain ways when they come down they interact with people um, by giving them direction right when it says that the Lord directeth, directeth the path of man the way he does that is these angels come down and they'll go ahead and 
you know, give you a dream or they'll give you uh, something to persuade you to do certain things. Well, besides that, besides interacting with humanity and namely us Israelites, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, they're here and keeping Esau, right? Esau being the name for the biblical name for the so-called Caucasian race, keeping him and his weaponry under control. This is why we hear about the spaceships going and deactivating nuclear missiles when they're launched or going and activating rockets, you know, in nuclear bases and then turning them off. And that's because what they're doing is they're observing and making sure everything is going to the will that the Lord wants it to, which is going to be what? The World War III, which the Lord has prophesied will take place. And these devils, these Edomites, they know this. So what are they doing? Well, they're going to try to take this narrative of the Bible and they're going to try to twist it to their own benefit, right? This is why they've all of a sudden, in these last couple of years, have come out with the truth that there are so-called UFOs and they're putting it into people's minds now because why? Well, because they're now going to come out with their own UFOs. Let's get this. The 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And you see, Esau is going to bring forth his own chariots. Because remember, the government is about a hundred years more advanced than the general population. And this is due to their suppression of technology, patents, and all the things that you we hear about. Right? We've seen advanced weaponry be revealed on battlefields when they get destroyed or they're revealed by the enemies. Well, what we're going to see is things like this on the battlefield over Esau's tanks. But what's going to happen is then you're going to see the true chariots come. Right? The true chariots that the Lord is going to come and destroy Esau's physically created chariots that, that Esau has worked hard to develop. And these are some examples of that technology. Let's take a look real quick. As the plane soared above an unfamiliar region in China, a passenger gazed out of the window, capturing a captivating video. A sense of awe and curiosity filled the air as the passenger's camera focused on a peculiar sight. A disc-shaped object, about the size of a small car, effortlessly gliding in parallel to the airplane, near one of its wings. The crispness of the video allowed the viewer to perceive the details of the disc distinctly. As seconds passed, an intriguing occurrence took place. The mysterious object seemed to activate a device of some sort, creating a mesmerizing effect. Space and time itself appeared to fold around the disc as if the laws of physics were being bent to its will. The passenger's video captured the surreal moment in all its glory, a testament to an encounter that defied conventional understanding. As the object sped away from the aircraft, its velocity accelerated to a staggering 24,000 miles per hour, leaving an indelible impression on the mind of the witness. seen here is a steadied video of an encounter that was seen over uh, I believe it was Los Angeles where this object was captured now you can barely see it but you can see it has some sort of cockpit and it appears to be hovering but you see this is what I'm talking about see these two vehicles here what they are they're advanced military technology these are technology that Esau has created this is why they have metal like structures or I guess you could say mechanical right because when you see the the uh, chariots of the Lord they're either extremely large like what we see with that chariot hiding in the clouds or there are simply globes of, of light going back and forth. Or in that video, what looked like Hawaii, 
they're flashes of light that just go right by. They're going too fast for anything that we can have. So this right here is what Esau is going to bring forth and, and claim that these are the aliens. And I've heard it rumored that they're going to shoot down planes, they're going to make planes disappear, and they're going to create some sort of threat, you know, from these devices, from these chariots, these Esau-made chariots, so that way they could justify them weaponizing space, so that way they could get ready for when the Messiah truly returns. And this is where that prophecy of revelations about there being war in heaven is going to play out, where you're going to have Michael and his angels versus Satan and his angels. Well, these are going to be the chariots that Satan and his angels, angels being these Edomites and these other nations fighting with them and these uh, technologies. Now, apparently, um, from what I've read, China has advanced technology that has been given to them and this is more likely why this is filmed over China, right? Because this is what China has been developed. So. Uh, when you go to uh, 4chan, there's a huge leak, apparently, of a, a, a military insider who's dying of cancer. And he says that, that these chariots are basically docking underground, right there by the Bermuda Triangle and someplace over there in the Med Mediterranean oceans. And that they basically come in and out of the oceans and that once in a while they'll go into space. But for the most part, the government is ma mainly just keeping track of the ones coming in and out of the oceans. Apparently there's like a large underground factory or huge like mothership is what they call it uh, that these ships are going in and out of. Now we understand these are those huge father ships that the Bible speaks of. Right? What does it say? This is Proverbs 15 and 3. And the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yashai are in every place beholding the evil and the good and that's what those chariots are the chariots that these military people are are seeing right with uh, like that chariot that you've seen over the ukrainian soldiers those are the eyes of the lord observing the events going on in the world so that way the lord could intervene in what he needs to and again it's good this is going to be the future for esau right these chariots are going to show up over the military we're over there in the land of uh, the Middle East the Levant area when World War III takes place and then also you're gonna see huge chariots over the cities and why well because again the Lord at the same time he's gonna be destroying the armies of the world he's gonna be taking up the elect the 144,000 plus the one-third of Israel and they're all gonna be going into these chariots but these are gonna be the true chariots, these are going to be the man-made craft which these devils, these Edomites are going to try to pass off as the so-called aliens. This is Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Right? And you see, these devils, they're going to deceive the entire world with all their technology. They're already doing it with their pandemics. Right? So when this whole thing ends, everybody's going to realize that they've been lied to. And primarily by these Edomites. And, the, and this chariot disclosure is simply going to be one of the great deceptions that Esau is bringing forward. Because the true chariots are the chariots of God. And those beings inside of them are the angels and they look like so-called black people now the other beings right the left-hand angels these look like demons the gray aliens and whatnot see those would be the left-hand angels but again I digress this is Luke 21 and 28 and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh and that's what we should be doing, Akiyam. Now that we're getting close to the end, we're seeing all these prophecies come to pass. So much so that Esau is now having to push damage control and make up his own reasoning why we're seeing 
all these chariots, this is the time to start paying attention to the heavens, right? To the sky. And, and keep an eye out for the Lord. Because again, you're going to be seeing chariots more often, more and more. This is going to be a common occurrence, right? And, we're, and eventually, on that one great and dreadful day, the Lord's going to show up. So again, hopefully this video was edifying, Nakiyam. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment boards. But until then, I'll give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Bashem Shalom.